it was tremendously exciting. The um, of the those those first two uh, classes, this the list of people who've gone on to have really stellar careers: Patty Ann Rogers, Tracy Doherty, Paget Powell, Sidney Wade, Michelle Boiseau, Jeff Green, Tom Cobb. I could go on and on and on. And since we were a relatively small group, um, it, it, over the time that I was there, the program grew to 100 plus students. But in those days, there were about 30 of us. And we were all in the trenches together. And um, each of us was warmly welcomed by the then chair of the English department, John McNamara, and um, who helped us get our schedule straight. The creative writing faculty, the students, and the literature faculty in the English department all were a very cohesive group, which gave us a lot of camaraderie and a lot of informal time together. And um, it, it was um, thrilling. And there are so many more, more students I could, could mention. Glenn Blake, who, who's now um, running the Johns Hopkins program, so many uh, students who were so gifted and so dedicated to their work and so up for anything. And the faculty encouraged that. It's vital to have a faculty such as that at, uh, at the University of Houston Creative Writing Program who really care about the students' careers, care about the students personally, care about the development of their writing, care about the, uh, what they're reading, and encourage them to know how to expand their literary horizons. And then, when they have good work, encourage them to send it out and keep on it and, as they get published, and then, in the, in the graduate program, um, gra graduate students in my class were already publishing. Um, I think the first one uh, was Padgett Powell's Edisto, and everybody was up and running after that. Because shortly after, Cynthia asked me to be the first administrative director of the creative writing program. This was in 1982. So for the next four years, I had a fabulous time working with the faculty, both the uh, permanent faculty and the visiting faculty, creating systems that would help keep the program as it was growing at a really rapid rate and all of, all of the other dimensions of the program going so that um, the faculty could do what they do best, which is lead and teach and um, make decisions. And I'll, um, I'll, I, Donald Barthelme um, was, at one point I wrote Donald Barthelme a letter uh, when, I, when I accepted the job, I guess about a semester in he, after I'd accepted the job, he was in New York with um, his wife, Marion, waiting for Catherine, their baby, to be born. And so I was keeping you posted on what was going on back at the program. And uh, one, one thing I remember writing to him was, my main job is placating geniuses. <laughs> because you can imagine uh, with people of, with, writers and teachers of such extraordinary caliber and creativity and such vision for the program. It was often like herding cats. They were often in conflict with each other. They, um, they all wanted time for their own work, of course, understandably. They had, they wanted their own um, particular, they had their own particular idea about their teaching schedules and each had a big personality, let me put it that way. And uh, I sometimes, to tell you the truth, I sometimes felt like the eldest daughter in a household of highly creative but um, conflicting adults, even as they had the best interests of the creative writing program in mind. Um, to give you a And it's so great to see that in those early days, we 
there, there was so much growth going on. For one thing, there was um, a, a great vitality and uh, demographically in Houston, things were really taking off and um, all kinds of interesting people in the arts were moving to Houston. And um, Cynthia in particular was terrific at garnering the support of the community. You know, one thing um, that I that I think encapsulates the creative writing program is the uh, the Poets and Writers Ball, and having been to many myself and uh, as a reader and as a as a party goer, <laughs> and I I think of the Poets and Writers Ball and I think of the, the spirit of festivity and celebration and I think Stan and Cynthia and Don and Roselle and, and Philip, they could all look at, they could all um, think of and be and see the Poets and Writers Ball as the culmination and a celebration of what they so long ago envisioned and what a triumph that was. It was and it is glorious.